on the first Pentecost, there weren't sanctuaries or congregations. There were disciples filled with the Holy Spirit, having been breathed upon by the risen Lord, trying to do the best they could to share the peace of Christ with the world around them. So on this Pentecost Sunday, friends, I say to you again, grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome home, children of God. Welcome home. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Christ our God, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. Let us pray. God of Easter dawn and Pentecost fire, rush again into our lives as we celebrate the sending of your Spirit. We tell strange stories about tongues of fire and wonky disciples. These are more than odd stories about odd people and odd events. These are stories of your grace and your people. We are also your people and these are also our stories. Like them, we get confused. Like them, we wonder how such spirit-fueled love is possible. And like them, we can be afraid. Send your spirit among us and breathe your peace upon us. Help us to discover your love for us. Help us to discover our love for each other. Help us to remember our love for ourselves. Amen. The reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, reading verses 19 to 23. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the religious authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sin and separation of any, they are forgiven and restored. If you don't forgive, what are you going to do with them? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What was is not what will be. Those are the emotional truths that the disciples wrestle with in John's Pentecost story. The tomb is empty and joy is perhaps just on the horizon, but life is anything but normal. Unlike Acts, there are no big crowds, no tongues of fire, no accusations of drunkenness and debauchery. It's just the disciples behind closed doors, a self-imposed isolation and the paralysis of their hope. So on the morning that Jesus appears, all they know for sure is that what was is not what will be. Last Sunday, as we started to look forward to the phased lifting of lockdown, the New York Times published 1,000 short obituaries on their front page. Now, it's only 1% of the U.S. figures and less than one-third of 1% of the global estimates. But it seemed to speak for the world and it stopped me cold in my tracks. They were not simply names on a list. They were us, the byline read. They were us. On our slow days, we're still filled with 
that baseline anxiety, that quiet mourning. But it's mixed in with hope and empathy, beauty, anger, and boredom all at once. And what becomes clear from that cacophony is that what was is not what will be. Jesus appears into such a jumble of human brokenness and potentiality, breathing peace. The Easter, Jesus appears bearing Good Friday's wounds. Christ is changed by the cross, and he bears the brokenness of the world in his very being. His wounded chest can breathe out the Spirit upon the disciples. And friends, we need such peace and such spirit today. The thin veil of control has been stripped away, and each of us has our own front page list of names carved into our souls, those beloved ones hidden from our eyes yet never gone from our hearts. God hears those names and bears our wounds. There are no forgotten souls, no unmarked graves, no wasted tears in the heart of God. Our wounds are sacred to God. And so Jesus sends the Holy Spirit, that spirit of promise, persistence, and presence into our jumbled, beautiful, and broken lives. The fullness of the incarnation means that the heart of God bears the wounds of our broken world. And so it is the wounded, risen Christ who calls us to hope and calls us to renewed life. And it is the wounded, risen Christ who breathes the peace of the Spirit into our lives. Such spirit reminds us that peace is never the absence of tension. It's the persistence of justice. It's the promise of grace. It's the joy of love. And so Jesus sends out those disciples to be grace in peace in a hurting and hopeful world. Each day will bring another paper, another headline, another crisis, and thousands of names. The hundreds of thousands of lives will be forgotten by our twiddle addled world. What will be their memorial? How is God calling us to remember them as we go forward? Now, no action or intent can undo the lives that have been lost. Yet, how can we live more fully, more gently, more compassionately? How will the light of our lives shine upon the pain of their deaths? We've been changed by these times. Do we dare leave the world around us unchanged? Breathing the very breath of God, may we stand firm with the courage of the Creator. May we feel deeply the wounds of the Son, and may we laugh fully with the joy of the Spirit. What was is no more. There will be no return to normal, at least not at first, and perhaps not at all. And frankly, normal wasn't that great for too many folks so much of the world is still on fire, and so many around us are silently suffering, and this virus is far from beaten. Still, the Spirit comes in the midst of all that mess, and today, Pentecost Sunday, is a day of joy. It's a day of invitation. It's a day of challenge. So many of us have been moved by the sense of unity, despite our distance from one another. This is of the Spirit. We've been inspired by the courage of the NHS frontline workers and the grit of those essential unsung workers. This is of the Spirit and this is of God. We've been reminded of the beauty of human kindness. This is who we are called to be. So with God's help, what was is not what has to be. Hallelujah. Amen.
disposable cups and disposable heroes, of throwaway lines and throwaway lives, set our sights upon those gifts which are sourced in you. Ground us in your living spirit that we may be witness to the new birth of your love in our lives. Slow down the consumption of our communication. Push us beyond tweets and posts of that 24-hour news cycle. Help us to pause before the pain and the confusion of our fractured and fragmented world, that we might perceive the story of your good news in Jesus Christ alive in the world today. And so we pray for the Queen and for her family. We pray for our families, for those without family, because God, we know that we are finally all your family. We pray for those in power and for those without power. Those names filling the headlines and those names forgotten by us but known and loved by you. Turn our full and forgetful minds to the task of your peace, your justice, your love, that we might have tongues of grace, hands of healing, bodies bending towards your wholeness. Fill us with Pentecost fire and attune us to the needs of others while not neglecting that which heals our own wounds. Push us beyond simple explanations and proximate solutions onto that steep path of true reconciliation and deep listening. Remind us of the gifts already within us and the challenge that those talents bring to us. For all good things are from you, and all good things are of you, just as we are from you, and just as we are of you. In your spirit-filled and living, giving name, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, go out into the world in peace. Wear your masks if you need to. But have courage and return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of that same Holy Spirit be and abide with us all, now and beyond forever. Amen. For thyself, best gift divine, to the world so freely given. For that great, great love of thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. 
Christ our God, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise.